I just want to say I am shook. I am shooketh. I am everything. Procreate, yeah, I did a damn thing with this update. This is my first time ever doing a review. I feel like it's gonna be pretty good. But let's just jump right into the video. I'm always doing the most. Finish my cup and reload. Let it swing right back. The first thing I want to talk about is the gallery preview. Now with the gallery preview, you have the ability to view all your canvases in full screen mode without having to click on a canvas, close it out, click on a canvas, close it out. So you don't have to open up Facebook, you don't have to open up Instagram, you don't have to open up your photo app. You can show all your artwork from this one app. So what you want to do is with two fingers, touch on a canvas and like zoom out and the photo is going to snap into full screen mode and you could just scroll through your artwork or you could just tap on a photo it will bring up two arrows one pointed to the left one pointed to the right and you could use those arrows to click through your artwork the quickest way for you to just exit out of this full screen mode is just to pinch out and there you go quick easy and simple one thing I am excited for is the quick shape option. You guys do not understand how hard it is for me to draw a circle. <laughs> like, I be struggling. I mean, yes. Like, yes. Procreate, yes. Okay? So, I'm going to show you guys how this works. So, you know when you draw a line and you hold it, it snaps into, like, place and you can move it. And all this good stuff. Well, we're going to try this with a shape. Like, Let's draw a circle. Let's see if this works for me because I suck at drawing circles. So let's see how this goes. And you want to hold it. Don't let it go. And it's going to snap. So as you can see, before I even let this go, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. I try my best to draw a circle. It's similar to a circle, but it's like more oval. But yeah, so anyways, at the top, you can see it says edit shape. So when we click on that, it shows us ellipse and it shows us circle so when you click on a circle it's gonna like try to make the perfect make a perfect circle using the bad circle you already drew <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say so as you can see this made a perfect circle for me and I am so happy with this you can move the points to make it you know to fix like the circle but as you can see once you move it it goes to ellipse so we don't want that so we're gonna go back to circle and it's gonna go back to being the perfect circle. Oh my gosh, I mean I am so excited for this. Like y'all do not understand. Let's try to draw a triangle. There you go. A triangle has been created. So once again, you can edit a shape, you could do a quadrilateral with a polyline. You have the option to move each individual line so as you can see my triangle wasn't fully connected so you can match match that up to make sure it's a fully perfect triangle and yeah I mean this is gonna work with any shape you create and I am just so excited for this like so excited so excited see rectangle square like this is so amazing the next thing I want to talk about that came with Procreate 4.2 is the clipping mask. And I know so many people are excited for this. It was highly requested. Um, for those who are familiar with Photoshop, this is something that many people use in Photoshop. I am not too familiar with clipping mask, but I have an uh, overall general idea of how it works. So I'm just going to keep this really, really simple because I don't even want to complicate myself, let alone complicate you guys, confuse you guys, and all that good stuff. So as you can see, I have a background here. It's just a yellow to purple gradient effect. And what I um, did is just created a whole new layer. And um, I'm just going to do a heart shape, a circle shape, whatever. Um, this is very useful for those who does lettering and like to you know add little foils and everything very very easily to their work so we're gonna just draw a little heart and you know i suck at like drawing perfect hearts so yeah i'm just gonna fill this little heart make sure everything's filled so what you want to do next is bring the background layer to the top 
so let's say you have like a foil here like a golden foil or any other texture you just bring it to the top it's gonna hide the shape you double click on the layer and select clipping mask and there you go now the heart shape is filled with my background color the good thing about this is that you're not gonna mess up any of your layers everything is still in its individual layers and if you don't like it you could just always undo I have seen so many people um you know fill like different things in with like photos like they created like a circle and just made like put a photo to it um so many different things and once again those who who know more than me with the whole clipping mask feel feel free to comment down below I think the thing I am most excited about is the new Liquify Dynamics that has been added to the whole new 4.2 update. I am like so excited for this. When I was playing yesterday, I kept on just saying, yes, 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 yes. Like, I just love this because I am one who just sit around and just play with the whole Liquify option and I just love it. So I'm just going to show you guys how it works. Let's just clear this layer. And just let's just add some random colors. Let's do like the rainbow. I am like so excited for this. Like I just love it. I swear I do. I was so excited when I saw this. Just keep adding the rainbow. Okay. Let's add purple. So you can find this in the whole um liquify go to adjustments and go to liquify and as you can see we have new features here we have the whole crystals and the edge one and if you look at the bottom we also have distortion and momentum momentum yeah i am saying that right <laughs> so before that hold on let's turn these down before that we like you could just push it that's it that would just be the end of it now when you um add like the whole distortion up and the momentum it gives like a little it like pushes it like a little water effect like ripples <laughs> i just love how this looks i am so excited for this like just look at this you guys just look i mean who would not love this like look at this wow i am shook i am shook 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 yes <laughs> let's go back um now with the whole crystal thing when you click on it crystal sorry it gives like this whole like sharp glass looking effect like zigzags and sharp edges as you can see let's make it bigger you see how it's doing that i know you guys can see that and that's pretty cool but uh, I don't know <laughs> that's that's cool though I ain't gonna sit here and lie say it's not and with the whole um, edge thing it's gonna create like an edge so it's like it look like it's pinching it in as well that's that's weird but if you would like go up and down it's gonna like create like a straight line like you're gonna just like get get edges you know what I'm trying to say like I feel like that's kind of cool Depending on the type of effect you want to give. Um, yeah, I mean, I just love this. Like, what do you guys think about this whole thing? I feel like my favorite is just going to be messing around with, like, the whole momentum thing. And, oh, my gosh. I just, like, literally love this. Like, I mean, I could play with this for hours and when I get tired of this. So, I feel like, I mean, if you know Adobe Sketch, I believe it's in Adobe Sketch. It has this whole little water brush that like gives like this little watercolor thing and it moves when you paint i mean it will be so dope if procreate let's say i'm painting and i'm doing like purple whatever and it's gonna like as soon as you put the brush on it's gonna spread out like that the next thing i feel like i'm just like so excited for is the whole taper um option we have now as you can see here when you oh the way that you get to this is you just click on like the brush settings and Touch your taper and touch taper, and I'm guessing one is like when you use your pen and the amount of pressure you use, it's gonna show like how quick the taper come in, and the touch one is I guess is when you're using your finger or something. So um, 
it shows like amount, size, opacity, pressure, tip, and tip animation. Same goes for touch, you just don't have the tip animation. And underneath that amount, you see that it has this it has like two bars. One is a percentage, one is like the amount of tapering it's gonna do at the end. Um, this middle icon in between those, I don't know what is this called, but I know when it's highlighted blue, both of them will move, and when it's like gray, only one will move. You will like have to really customize this. So I'm gonna show you guys how a brush look without the whole tapering. Make it bigger. As you can see, it's just like no fade in to a fine point. It's just gonna stay as that whole curve look. Increase the taper effect. You will see that now it will give it a blunt start, a blunt end. Like this is goals. Like who wouldn't want this? I'm trying to understand like why. I know for a lot of people who does cartooning, this is going to be very, very helpful to get those little eyelashes to be popping. Like, you understand? Like, yes. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is um, the feathering features we have now in the selection menu. Um, if you go on the... Oh, you can see that it has um, ellipse here too. So, it will be easy for you to just like, you know, get that good old shape. And as you can see now that is selected now you see that it says feather so with the feathering once you have it selected what it's going to do is fade out your selection very very smoothly it's not going to give it a blunt ending none of that stuff so once you have your um selection you can increase the amount as much as you want and let's go a little bit higher press Duplicate when you duplicate it, it's gonna put it to a whole new layer. Now we can turn off the background layer, and as you can see, it's not a blunt ending, it's phased very, very smoothly. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> now, in a selection menu, we have um, warp, uniform. Oh, let me take off. But the whole uniform thing, as you can see, is just going to keep everything unified so you don't have to worry about resizing issues. And also we have a rotation feature. So this green dot above the middle top one, when you select that, you can rotate your whole canvas. That is amazing. So when you play around with the whole selection menu, sometimes you may notice that your um, selection gets like very pixelated or, um, yeah, pixelated. I don't want to say grainy. I'm just say pixelated. Um, with the whole interpolation feature we now have, um, it says nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic. This, will, this basically means that how it's going to form its new pixels. Would it be the nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic? Um, some people recommend to keep it on bicubic. So yeah, I feel like that's going to be amazing because now you don't have to worry about the quality of your lines or whatever you have selected to be ruined because sometimes it happens. Not all the time, just sometimes. Um, yeah, I feel like that's going to be amazing. And finally, I want to show you guys the whole crop and resize feature. Um, you will open it up in the actions menu, go under canvases, and it says crop and resize. We're going to click that. So as you can see here, it's going to show you everything you have, your camera size, the amount of layers, rotation, all that stuff. So you will go to one of the corners and you will basically resize it like that. And as you can see, when you make it smaller, um, it will show like the size of it and the amount of layers that you can use. When you make it bigger, so basically the bigger the canvas, the less layers that you will have to work with. And I know for a fact the better quality iPad you have, the more powerful it is, the more layers you will be able to work more layers you will be able to work with. So yeah, and once you resize it to your liking, you just hit done. And it will basically resize the whole canvas so you don't have to worry about going to another app and ruining the quality of your um artwork. Basically, this is my whole little um, overview of the new update that came to Procreate, and I am very, very excited for it. I feel like my favorite one is going to be the liquify um, feature and the taper feature. Um, if you guys 
um enjoyed this video be sure to give it a big old thumbs up if you have any feedback please let me know down below this is my first time ever doing a review so hopefully in due time i will get better at doing reviews and let me know down below what you think that you'll be using um the most with the new 4.2 update so once again i want to thank you guys for watching and be sure to subscribe follow me on instagram at simone alicia underscore and i'll catch y'all all in the next video